Great, so my, my life over the last few years has become dominated really by adventure to a large degree and um, quite a part of that is because it's a passion of mine. I've always enjoyed getting out into the wilds of the world and seeing what's there and testing myself and all the rest of it. But it's also now become such a big part of how I spend my time because it, as odd as it sounds, it's my job. And it, it sounds very unlikely to say that you're a professional adventurer. It sounds like you're really just unemployed and pretending that you're not. But through giving talks and writing about it and making films, I make a career out of it. And my speciality, my discipline, I suppose, is uh, long distance human powered journeys. And that's really mastering the art of self-inflicted misery. Because most of the time it's awful. You're having a terrible time. Your feet are sore from walking. Your bottom sore from cycling. You're sleeping in a puddle. You're having a terrible time. Um, but I keep doing them. I keep going back to them. And I don't think that it's just because I'm masochistic. I've never really been aware of that. I, I think what it is is that there's another side to it. There's a side of wonder. It's a great way to see the world and to explore and living life with a sense of wonder is such a, a, a wonderful thing to do. You, you really start to, to see things. You immerse yourself um, in your surroundings and you get a whole new perspective on life because of that. Um, I started doing this really when I left university. I uh, graduated on the, on the day I graduated from my uh, undergrad degree, I got offered a job and it was really quite a good job and this was a surprise to everyone because I spent three years studying film so I wasn't expecting to ever get a job anywhere. Um, but the problem was that I, I didn't really want this job and uh, in fact I didn't want any job and I don't think it was just that I was lazy, it was that I was 21 years old and I had all these hopes and dreams and ambitions and and things I wanted to do that I just wouldn't be if I, I wouldn't be able to if I got settled down into this career so early on. And I, my greatest fear was that 20, 30, 40 years down the line, I would find myself doing something I'd absolutely no passion for and really regretted all the opportunities that I'd missed. What I really wanted to do was get out and challenge myself, test myself. I'd had a pretty easy ride of it, I felt, and I wanted to get out and explore and really see what I was made of. I wanted essentially to go on an adventure, try something really difficult, try something that I might fail at, and at least if I tried and failed, I would know that I gave it a go. So I began to plan some sort of journey, and I realized that the best way to do this was to make a compromise. I would take this job, I would work at it for a year, save up all my money, quit a year to the day from when I started, and uh, set off on this adventure. Um, as you can see from the slide skipping on, I went by bicycle, and <laughs> <laughs> this, this was not really planned. I think the important thing was just that I went and did something, uh, and it didn't really matter what that was or where it was. I just had to go and do it. Um, but I needed to choose some sort of method of transport, and a bicycle was wonderful. It's very cheap, it's very efficient, um, it doesn't take very many brain cells to operate, so this, this was perfect for me. Uh, I also needed to start somewhere, um, and I'd always grown, I'd grown up reading the, the great road trip stories from North America. I love Kerouac and Steinbeck, and I wanted to be Jack Kerouac, but on a bicycle. So I thought I would set off. The problem with all of this was just that I was a an idiot. I had no, no idea um, exactly what I was doing. And so my, um, my bicycle was terribly overloaded. You can see from the picture here, I, I don't know if anyone's traveled by bicycle or knows anything about it, but really you just need about two bags, probably these two at the back. The rest of it is ludicrous. Uh, there's a, a debate that goes on in cycle touring circles. Some people like to take bags to carry their gear. Some people choose a trailer. And I didn't realize this was an either or option, so I took both. <laughs> Um, and I set off on this dream adventure of mine out of New York City, hoping just to ride as far as my £3,000 in savings would take me. And when I set off, I, I was totally underprepared. I, I couldn't move my bicycle because it's so heavy. I was very unfit. It was winter. I was freezing cold. I didn't bring any gloves, all that stuff and no gloves. Um, and every night I was alone in my little tent. And this was me following my dream. And it was truly awful. I, following your dream is an awful thing to do, I thought. And when I was in my tent, I realized that I'd never actually camped on my own before, um, the brave, heroic explorer that I was. And every time I heard the wind whistle through or a branch breaking, I was convinced it was killers coming to get me or bears coming to eat me or killer bears or any of the other things you find in the forests of New York. Um, and really, all I, what it came down to was that all I had to do in those first few weeks in order to succeed was not to give up. 
everything was going to be miserable. And someone much wiser than me who'd done big bicycle trips had given me that very advice. They said, it's going to be awful to begin with. Push through that. Don't quit unless you're in a good mood. If you're in a good mood and you still want to quit, then that's the time to do it. So I just knew I had to get through these first couple of weeks. And um, I, I think that's one of the great things about travel and especially human powered travel is it's such a formative experience. You learn so much about yourself. And this is really what I wanted. I wanted the misery so that I could learn about myself, have that real experience of facing problems I'd never had before and just having to overcome them. No one else was going to come and fix it for me. No one else was going to come and tell me that I was safe and I could curl up safely in my sleeping bag. I had to learn that for myself by going and doing it. And when you travel by human power, and especially by bicycle, you learn to find stability in all sorts of new places. You no longer have the house and the job and the car and the things that we might have in normal life, but you do have a bicycle or you have a rucksack and you attach so much importance to those things and you realize the things we need to survive and to thrive in life are really very, very few. And by not giving up, I was succeeding in this trip and quite quickly I managed to get a lot better at this life of adventure. I made it out of the forest of New York without getting eaten. I got up into the, uh, the Great Lakes and then down into the Midwest and was really starting to enjoy myself. I don't know if any of you have been to the Midwest, but if you have, you'll know it's, it's amazing boring. It's the worst place I've ever been actually for cycling because it's, it's so dull. But as you get further west, the landscape starts to crumple a little bit. You get into South Dakota, there's the badlands. You get into Yellowstone National Park. It's essentially a caldera of a, an enormous supervolcano, a wonderful geothermal strange place to be. And that's the wonderful thing about North America is it's such a diverse place. You have all of these wonderful sites and just to be there, you have a very visceral thrill of enjoying new roads, new places, new landscapes. And because it's North America, it wouldn't be what it is without the other side of it. You have the wonderful and you have the wonderfully mad. I think probably the less said about some of the other things in America, the better. The testicle festival was not a high point. But what, what was better was reaching the, the Pacific Ocean. And the day I arrived at the ocean, knowing that I crossed a continent by human power, that's one of the best memories of my life, not just of this trip. You, you can't buy an experience like this. But the next slide is... New Zealand, because that's where I ended up going next. I, I'd only planned to go across North America. I didn't know where I wanted to go from there, but um, I knew that I wanted to keep on traveling. I still had some money left, so I, I decided to keep traveling. And um, when I was in San Diego, having come, come down the Pacific coast, I managed to talk a large Kiwi corporation into giving me free transport over to New Zealand in return that I would write one blog for them for their website um, in <laughs> recycling for two months around the country. That's what adventure's all about. It's just blagging stuff. Um, from New Zealand, I moved on to Australia and then up into Southeast Asia through Thailand and Cambodia and Laos and Vietnam, China, all these countries and cultures I knew nothing about until I was there having an adventure on my bicycle. And uh, for a large part of it, I had absolutely no idea where I was going, but I, I couldn't speak the language, I couldn't read the script, so I had no idea what the map said. But I think if you don't know where you're going, it makes it very hard to get lost. And that's a very appealing sentiment. If not for life, then certainly for adventure, it's a great way to travel. Um, after about 14 months of this trip, I arrived into Hong Kong, and this became the de facto end of my journey for no other reason than I'd run out of money. I simply ended here and was ready to go home. I thought, I'll finish here, go home, rejoin normal life. Except I didn't have to. It was amazing. I, I met a, another explorer in Hong Kong. When you move in these circles and you, you're out of your comfort zone, you start to meet people doing other odd, strange things. And there was an explorer in Hong Kong called Rob Lilwell, who had this idea to walk across China. He wanted to see more of what he thought was the most interesting country in the world. And um, I immediately agreed. I'd only cycled there for a couple of weeks in total, but I, I really wanted to see more. And Rob's idea was to walk through the country from the very north, from the Gobi Desert in Mongolia, all the way down to Hong Kong. And uh, that was, it's about 3,000 miles in total. So that's, if you take six months to do it, that's six days a week uh, walking a marathon a day with a, a rucksack. And um, in the rucksack would be all your camping gear, all your camping gear plus camera equipment. Rob wanted to make a TV show so you could share this with an audience. And I'd loved all the self-indulgent side of travel. I think that's great when you're 21 and you've just left university. It's brilliant to go off. And, and my two great questions that I had, my, my 
areas of wonder. I wondered what I was capable of, and I wondered what was out there. And I learned quite a lot about those two things. But I was, I was 22 now, and I, 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 you know, I was no longer fit for the self-indulgent side. I wanted something else in life. And I find that through storytelling. I, I think there's a great power to be had in finding stories and places and being able to give a platform to thoughts and ideas that wouldn't otherwise get that. And that's now what I do. This was the journey that really gave me a career in this. And I try and tell stories through my expeditions to entertain or educate or inspire or whatever it is through um, adventure. And I think that's, that's something I'm very passionate about and something I think uh, can be really worthwhile. So this journey really appealed to me because it was a way to first start doing that. So we we set off in winter. We somehow managed to talk National Geographic into commissioning us for a four-part TV series to make this. And so now we had an audience. Adventure is blagging stuff. That's probably the key message to take away from this. Just tell people that you're really good at things and they'll believe you. Um, <laughs> We weren't very good at things, though. We were still idiots. We set off into the desert and didn't know what we were doing. And for 12 days, we would see nothing. And we did know that there was no roads, as Ed said. But there is snow, um, and we weren't aware of that. It snowed for three days in the Gobi Desert. Who knew? It's the coldest <laughs> desert, the largest cold desert in the world outside of Antarctica. And for a long time, walking through this desert was just utterly awful. You wonder, why on earth am I doing this? This is type 2 fun. I don't know if you're aware of this notion. There's type 1 fun, where you do something, and it's fun. Uh, it's easy to get on board with it. Then there's type two fun where you do something and it's not fun, but afterwards you think about it and go, oh yeah, that was quite fun. Um, and that's, <laughs> that's expeditions. That's, that's a wonderful thing in and of itself. And uh, as we moved down through China, we, we got a greater sense of the place. We met so many people, wonderfully kind people. I, I find this in all of my journeys. If you ever need your faith restored in humanity, go out for a journey on foot or by bicycle and just walk for a couple of days or cycle, you will inevitably meet people who will take you in and be kind to you. The world is full of good, kind people everywhere in the world. Don't let anyone tell you any different. That's a wonderful thing about travel. We ended up in all sorts of places. And over six months, we moved from the subarctic in the north down to the subtropics, down to uh, Guilin, this beautiful limestone karst mountains, and saw a country. China's a place changing at a rate of knots, a place where old is meeting new, uh, freeways are popping up all over the place, cities are expanding. It's really a country where um, there's a, the biggest population migration in the history of the world occurring, hundreds of millions of people moving from the rural areas to the urban centers. And it's, it's fascinating for that, but it's also kind of a scary prospect about what might happen. We find the things we expected to, the Great Wall, people living in cave houses. These are wonderful things that you wouldn't find if you were moving on roads. You only find them by walking into the mountains. Uh, the rice farmers still millions of rice farmers using traditional methods. And finally, after six months of this trip, we arrived into what most of China will eventually look like, I think, into Hong Kong down Nathan Road into the rapid industrialization of uh, southern China and finished at the iconic harbor front and into the ocean where we literally couldn't take another step, uh, the perfect way to finish a walking journey. And this is now what I do. I've, I've done all sorts of uh, other journeys since. I've uh, walked through the empty quarter desert in Arabia, um, pulling a glorified shopping trolley, and I've um, kayaked down the longest river in Iran. Um, but what I, what I want to finish with is that uh, this is how I find wonder. I do these sorts of journeys because I love them. It's, it's a great way for me to indulge my passion and to do something that I think is worthwhile. And those are the two of the greatest things we can do with our time. Find something that fulfills us um, and find something that extends beyond ourselves, something that can be useful. And this is how I do it. This is what I think is wonderful. It, it gives me a connection, I think. I don't know how this clicker works. I don't know how the computer works. But if I get on a bicycle and ride off down the road, I feel a bit more of a connection to the world around us. And that inspires wonder in me. But here's the thing. You don't have to go and do that. You don't have to sleep in a puddle. You don't have to walk across China to find wonder. That's not the message of my talk. That's the way I do it. All you have to do is find out what it is that inspires wonder in yourself. Think about that. Think about your passion and find out how it is that you might begin to indulge that. And I think living adventurously, forging an adventurous mindset, living a life full of wonder, it's a very rewarding path to take. Enjoy.